Welcome back guys, this is CIT 225, uh, Network Security and Penetration Testing and we are covering a book called Guide to Computer Forensics and Investigations. Uh, we'll start chapter number 5 which is talking about working with Windows and command line interface systems. Uh, we'll try to understand different aspects like what different kind of uh, file systems are there in Windows, what are registry values and what are the startup files etc so that we can uh, uh, do some forensics analysis on the uh, computers or servers. Uh, before we start, there is a small disclaimer that we are covering this course for academic purposes only. Uh, all the techniques and tools used in this course must be used purely for academic purposes. If you are using it for anything other than academic purposes, you are solely responsible for your own actions. So the objectives of this uh, chapter are, uh, we'll try to explain the purpose uh, um, and the structure of the file systems by Microsoft and then uh, we'll define different structures. We'll try to explain these structures in NTFS disks. Uh, we'll list some of the options for decrypting the drives, either the entire drive or some files and we'll explain how the Windows registry works. Since you know that um, all information related to the softwares and operating system, different operations, etc., is kept in the uh, Windows registry. Uh, now we'll describe the uh, startup tasks. We, what are the startup tasks and what's the main importance of it? And we'll explain that what are virtual machines and why do we really need them? Now in order to investigate any digital evidence effectively, we must understand how uh, most of the commonly used operating systems are using different kind of file systems on the disk. Uh, we must even understand that how that data is stored on the computers uh, so that it helps us in, uh, in understanding and helps us in investigation. Uh, now CompiA A plus certification um, is very well um, uh, covering the topic when uh, they are explaining different file systems on it. So if you want to understand the basics of file systems and stuff, it's, it's a very good startup to um, finish A plus certifications of CompiA. Now a file system um, gives an operating system a roadmap to the data on the disk, how the data is stored on the disk. Uh, so when you, whenever you start any investigation, you must know uh, that what was the operating system which was installed on the computer and uh, uh, what was uh, uh, the file system that was used on that specific, uh, on that specific operating system. Now, um, there are lots of reasons uh, uh, why we must understand that even the, the basics of uh, the computer just like uh, CMOS or the BIOS setup, how the computer starts up and what different kinds of uh, um, options do you see in the BIOS setup. In order to understand uh, CMOS, computer stores the system configuration, date and uh, information about the peripherals which are connected to the computers when the system is powered on. Um, you can see that there is a small battery on the motherboard ad, um, as well which maintains the time and other things related to the computer. Uh, whereas the uh, basic input output system which we call as BIOS or extensible uh, firmware interface EFI contains the programs that perform input and output at the hardware level. So all the devices whatever are connected to the computer, um, they are reporting to the BIOS of the computer or uh, through the EFI. As you know that whenever we are installing an operating system on, uh, on a machine, uh, we change the boot sequence in the BIOS of the computer uh, where we'll uh, choose as the startup device as USB or internal hard disk or a floppy disk or a CD-ROM. Um, so in order to boot the computer, we can select the um, setup as you can see in this screen um, that they are trying to uh, show the date and time. You can select it from there. On SATA 3G as the first device which is connected to the motherboard is Western Digital Hard Disk and uh, then the other devices which are connected to the computer. Now we'll try to understand the uh, disk drives, what are they and uh, what is usually stored on it. If we are talking about uh, the normal hard drives which are uh, connected to the computers, we Okay, so in order to understand the geometry of uh, uh, the 
hard disk is a geometry refers to the disk logical structures and platters or tracks we or the sectors we call it which are there on the disk uh, the head of the device that reads and write the data to the drive uh, there are two heads per platter that read and write uh, at the top at the end at the bottom on both sides of um, of the disk now tracks are the um, uh, concentric circles on the disk platter uh, where the data is located actually uh, if we are talking about the cylinder, cylinder is a uh, column or tracks on two or more disc platters. Typically, each platter has two surfaces on top and the bottom. Um, so, a sector is a section on a track usually uh, made up of 512 bytes as you can see in the uh, next slide as well. Since the data is constantly written on the disk at different location depending if you are constantly reading and writing the data and deleting the files and stuff. Uh, so the data is kept at segregated at different locations on and off which become which makes the hard disk a little bit cluttered with the data and it becomes a little bit difficult in order to read it. That's why we have this uh, defragmentation which fragments all the data together and puts them in the right track so that we can save some space on the hard disk drive as well. Now here they are trying to um, uh, show the CHS calculation of uh, the hard drives uh, showing the disk platter and the tracks and uh, read and write heads which are there and then the total number of cylinders which uh, usually reads and writes the data on the hard drive. Now in order to understand different properties of a drive which we call it as uh, uh, zone bit recording um, it's the track density and uh, um, track density, uh, aerial density, head and cylinder screw, etc. are handled at the drive's hardware or firmware level. Uh, now, um, if we'll try to understand that uh, what are the different uh, things included in this one is, uh, first of all, we have the track density. Now if we'll see the solid state devices, all flash uh, memory devices have a feature called weird leveling. Now I'll explain it in a minute, just uh, read the slide, whatever they're saying, an internal firmware feature used in solid state drives that ensures even the wear of the read and write on all memory cells. Uh, when dealing with solid state disk drives makes a full forensics copy as soon as possible is critical in case you need to recover the data from an unallocated disk. Now we all know we are using the solid state disk for quite some time now. Um, it has an excellent read and write speed. We can understand it and uh, an awesome performance. Uh, um, there is no lagging and everything. But when it comes to forensics analysis and investigation, uh, recovering the data from uh, from a solid state disk uh, is uh, more challenging than recovering the data from a magnetic disk. Because it, on the magnetic disks, even if we have deleted the data, the traces of it remains on the hard drive itself. Whereas on these uh, uh, solid state disks, the data is written on it for temporary basis. It remains over there and if you leave it idle for um, a certain period of time, uh, anything which is written on those empty sectors uh, will be um, a part of weir leveling. Like there is a small charge which is present inside the cells of the um, internal memory and it keeps on recovering the data or the empty spaces which are available on the um, on the solid state disk. That's the way it is manufactured. Um, just to expedite the process of reading and writing on the disk, they keep on doing the basic level maintenance. The memory cells which are designed on the normal hard disk performs around about 10,000 to 100,000 reads and write depending upon the manufacturer design. If it would exceed that limit, it stops reading and writing or you'll get some kind of read and write errors. It means that the hard disk needs to be replaced. But whereas on the solid state disk, we have this feature of weir leveling, which is good in a way, but it becomes a little bit difficult if we are in the part of uh, um, the investigation process for the servers uh, uh, and uh, uh, normal workstations. Now if we are looking at uh, the, um, uh, if you'll explore the Microsoft file structures, Microsoft file structure sectors are grouped into different clusters where we are writing the uh, data on the hard drive. 
um, storage allocation units on one or more sectors together depending where the hard disk or the uh, from where is trying to write the data on it cluster range from 512 bytes um, up to 30,000 bytes on each cluster. Now combining sectors minimize the overhead of writing or reading um, to the file because it would be writing it together on, um, on different sectors of it. Now clustered and number sequence uh, when we are trying to understand the two file system which is anti file system or we call it, um, it NTFS. Uh, anti file system it's, it's usually starting at zero whereas for the FAT it's starting uh, from number two. Uh, first sector of all this contains the system area, the boot record, the file structure database, the basic information about the data that where it started writing and uh, um, what are the what is the information of their data which is being written on these disks now operating system assigns these clusters numbers as logical addresses which are um, there in order to uh, in order to organize the data now sector numbers are called the uh, physical addresses on which the data is actually residing on the hard disk uh, clusters and their addresses are specific to the logical drive where the disk has uh, uh, certain partitions on a partition on a lo logical hard drive is a portion or a part of the operating system where the operating system is residing. You might have an operating system residing on uh, one partition and the other partition must be kept for um, the uh, data whatever you are storing on the computer. But the primary partition on which the operating system is inst installed, that's the one which we are concerned about. Uh, Windows operating system can have three primary partitions uh, followed by an extended partition that can contain one or more logical drives. Hidden partitions are void. We don't worry about it because some of those partitions are required in order to maintain the information about other partitions. Largely unused gap between the part, uh, partitions or the gaps which are um, appearing on there. Now partition gap is the unused space which appears in between um, the partitions. And now every partition disk table in the operating system has a master boot record. Um, it's located at the sector zero of the hard disk drive because that's the sector which is reading when um, it's trying to load any operating system which is installed on that machine. In a hexadecimal editor such as WinHex, you might have used it in introduction to microcomputers. You can find the first partition at offset which is 0 cross 1 BE. That's the default where um, you'll find the um, initial or the starting boot sector of the hard drive. The file system in hexadecimal code is offset by 3 bytes uh, from 0 uh, cross 1 BE for the first partition um, and here they are showing an example of it. As you can see over here uh, that uh, 0 cross 1 BE is appearing over here which is showing the first offset of the hard drive. The number of sectors on each partition are mentioned over here which is this section and then we have first section of each partition. Um, that's how it's managed and the partition file system and the codecs are appearing over here. Now we have the first sector converted decimal places which is the number appearing over here. The basic information about the partition table as I discussed it earlier that it's appearing at this part of the file. Now most of the advanced systems you don't need to uh, worry about, uh, uh, about these details because the software is itself managing all these things which are appearing over here. Um, there it would automatically show you um, the starting and the ending point of the sectors which are appearing at different parts of the, um, of the recording. If we'll see the um, exam, if we'll examine the FAT disk and the uh, drive size plus the sectors on each cluster, we can see that the drive size, uh, if it's 8 to 32 MB, it's, it's usually residing on the sector, um, um, on first sector, which is on FAT 16, it's around about 512 bytes and so on. Uh, depending how many clusters we have, the more data we can save on it and uh, the huger capacity drives uh, can be managed for that. Okay, so if we'll see and examine the Microsoft files which are saved, uh, Microsoft operating system allocated this space in the file in clusters. Um, and Microsoft operating system allocated this space for the files by clusters. Now this practice is a result in the drive slack or 
we can call it is composed of unused space in the clusters between the end of each active file or at the end of the cluster. Now drive slack includes the RAM slack found mainly in the Microsoft uh, older operating systems um, and in the file slack. The newer Windows operating system when the data is written to the disk the remaining RAM slack is zeroed out and contains no RAM data which is included um, as far as the data is written on these uh, uh, computers. Now just follow it for the sake of understanding when we are examining the fat disk the end of file data is written somewhere around over here whereas the RAM slack ends at 120 bytes end of the 10th sector when we are writing the data starts and the file slack which is appearing in between falls in between the 64 sectors which is 512 bytes which is equal to 32768 bytes. That's the slack of the file. Now examining the flat disk when you run out of the room of an allocated cluster operating system allocates another cluster for you to save that file on. As file grows and requires more disk space around clusters are chained together so that they are combined together and tells you that it's a continuation of the data which is written as a result of a bigger file. The file can be broken or fragmented when the operating system stores the file on a FAT system. It assigns a starting cluster position in the file um, which is maintained back end in the initial sector of the hard drive where it's maintaining the database of all the files which are stored on the computer. So that's why when we are examining any hard drive um, we see these clusters which are appearing on it. Even if you are recovering the data on the hard drive you said that the cluster XYZ reading that much data and then it's recovering the files just like you might have checked it in the system file checker that it keeps on scanning different sectors of it and uh, on different clusters and it would keep on reading the data which is written in the proper format. When this first assigned cluster is failed, it runs out of the room, the FAT assigns the next available cluster to it so that the data is organized in a very good fashion altogether. But that's the case when the data is written initially. When you keep on deleting the data on regular intervals, reading and writing constantly on the hard drive, it falls at different segments and the previous segments from where the data is deleted, it usually kept empty. Now. When we do the disk fragmentation, it would recompile the data together in a sequence so that all these empty spaces will be removed from there. But keep in mind that once even the data is moved back from the previous locations to the new one, the older data which is already there, which was written on the disk, has been moved or deleted, is still recoverable depending that um, what's the health of the data which was written on those drives. Now let's continue when it's first assigned the cluster it would, and in the next uh, uh, cluster it's uh, contiguous to the current cluster which is appearing in the sectors. Uh, now deleting uh, FAT files in Microsoft operating system when a file is deleted directory entry is marked as deleted. It's only marked deleted but some impression of it remains over there uh, with the hex E5 character replacing the first letter of the file name so that from there you can see that in hexadecimal if the first character is E5 it means that um, something was deleted from it. And that's how we investigate when we are looking at the forensics part of it that um, how can we actually look at the uh, part where the data is written on the hard drive and if it's deleted um, that indicates that something was there which has been removed. Area of the disk where the deleted file result becomes unallocated disk space available to receive the new data for the newly created files or if it need more space in order to write some data on it. Now if we'll understand the NTFS file system, um, the NTFS file system introduced in Windows NT which used to be the operating system which was server operating system long time ago and then it evolved to server 2003 and so on. Primary file system for Windows 10, it's, it's based on um, the file system of Windows NT which we call is NTFS and we, and we know that NTFS is very famous for setting up the permissions on the things. Now improvement over the fact uh, what NTFS has the as the NTFS provides more information about the file uh, permissions allocation it gives more control over the files and folders and uh, 
uh, Microsoft, uh, NTFS was Microsoft, moved towards journaling the file system. It records the transactions before the system's carrying it out. So it keeps and maintains the information about that. On the disk, first data is in the partition boot sector of the operating system. Uh, next is the master file table and NTFS results in a smaller, um, for smaller disk drives. And NTFS also uses Unicode characters, uh, which, has in, uh, which is an international uh, data writing format. Now that's about the cluster sizes of it. Um, if you are using uh, uh, 7 to 500 MB of data and then to GB and TB and then 128 terabytes, so the sectors per cluster would be 128. 90FS file systems, uh, MFT contains information about all files on the disk, including the operating system files. Um, MF, um, MFT is the first 15 records observed for the file system record, which we call as metadata as well. As you can see, MFT, file name, that's the initial part based on the record of each NTFS volume. It would be starting with MFT, having a log, uh, log file and a volume file, keeping the information about the previous transactions and the volume um, uh, on that label and where it was stored. Further, these are the attributes, the way it is handling it. Uh, like attribute definition is uh, talking about the attributes or the table names and numbers and definitions. Uh, dollar sign represent the root file name index uh, that the file was residing over here for NTFS volume. Um, bitmap is the boot sector where we can find the information about the operating system and the boot sector. Um, use the volume and then uh, bad, clus uh, bad cluster file if it had any bad clusters that's where it's going to um, uh, keep the information security file uh, unique security dis um, descriptors for the volume also listed in access control list like where we want to allow certain users to access the files whereas the other users will not have any access in order to access the file. Now upscale, um, uh, the upcase table, uh, it converts the lowercase characters and uppercase and unicorn, how we are saving the stuff uh, with different formats on the computer. NTFX extension file is the original extension listed and uh, such it has the object identifier representing the data and other things which are appearing on the hard disk. Now we'll be looking at MFT file attributes uh, and where the files goes. All files folders are stored in separate records. Each record contains a folder information, attribute ID and stuff. And uh, if we'll move um, on the slides and uh, see that this is that what they are talking about, um, that the attribute ID is there appearing at 0 0.70 and 80 where the data resident files and stuff. Um, you can go through it, just um, the basic information about the attribute ID, what each attribute means. Uh, by looking at these codes, you can compare it with the forensics analysis of the hard drive where you have received it, uh, that this kind of data in the hexadecimal, what is it actually representing? And you can see in the MFT file attributes here, is, since it's in the hexadecimal and you have different tools in order to read that data, it's uh, showing the starting and the ending point of the uh, data which is residing on these uh, uh, file formats. MFT structure for the file, uh, 00, 0 and MFT records for identifier and uh, rest of the information. Again, they are just covering the same material about the last access when you access the files and uh, record was updated and when it was deleted, all that information. But uh, mind it that in most of the advanced softwares these days, it's already uh, handling all these things. So this is just the uh, logical part behind how these softwares are working and how um, they are trying to get the data out of the, uh, the computer because all these notations in hexadecimal they are representing something which is mach machine readable and it understands it, deciphers it 100% so that um, it recovers the data based on the findings over here. Otherwise, it's not having anything like physically going and reading the data on the disk. These are the tools which are used for those kind of purposes and they read for the starting of attributes and size of the attributes uh, plus the notation and second data run when it was written and when it was deleted from there. Okay. 
and TFS alternate data streams uh, ways uh, data can be appended into existing files um, and uh, in the entry again they are uh, talking about the same things where um, the data is written and the size of the second attribute from where it's starting and moving now NTFS uh, compressed files uh, provides compression to the data just like fair drive space 3 in Windows 98 compression utility of course that has been advanced like with the passage of time and most computer forensics tools can uncompress and analyze the compressed uh, um, data file very effectively now encrypting file system was introduced in um, way 2000 um, and it implements the public key and the private key and whenever we are talking about public key and a private key we are actually talking about encryption um, on the computers um, now encrypting the files and the folder volumes uh, um, even the uh, uh, encrypting file system or we say it EFS a recovery certificate is generated is just is sent to the local administrator account and with the help of that you can decrypt the files but make sure uh, that the files and the way you are encrypting the files you have a proper backup of it because if you lose it um, you lose everything recovery key implements the recovery certificate which is responsible of issuing that certificate in Windows administrator account and it can recover the key but if you are not the administrator of it or you have the power user access um, try not to play with the cipher and uh, other commands which are there for encrypting file system now deleting the NTFS files um, uh, means when a file is deleted on Windows NT or NTFS file system and later the operating system renames it or moves it to the recycle bin. We have seen it whenever we are pressing the delete key the item is deleted and it eliminates the file from the MFT listing so that it knows that the file was available over there. It would read, um, uh, leave some um, impression of it but uh, the actual file will be deleted and removed from there. Now the resilient file system was designed uh, to address very large storage of data. Keep in mind that resilient file system it automatically um, it automatically repairs uh, the data and the spaces which is there in between spaces empty. It is not meant to be as the boot operating system or the boot file system um, for the drives. Uh, features incorporated into resilient file system design is maximize data availability, making sure that it is available when you need it. Um, it improves the data integrity making sure that the data has not been altered by any means um, and it's available in the true sense and designed uh, for scalability where you can expand the uh, size of the data and a resilient file system using disk structure similar to MFT or uh, um, NTFS uh, we'll try to understand encryption in our next lecture so that's it for today guys